Hey everybody, Frank Romano here at Harbor Equity Partners. I uh, want to speak a little bit today about the issue that we've had with Eagle Security International. Uh, it's been posted on our blacklist. Uh, it's something that we haven't have given enough attention, so we want to try to give a little more attention to that today. Uh, you know, I've studied a lot about human behavior in my 25 years in business and one thing that uh, that I noticed is basically all of these scammers that I've seen during my time, like a Madoff or a Dreyer, Mark Dreyer, or somebody like that, um, basically will look to build on your confidence and make you make you feel comfortable, like you're you're with a winner, or you know they'll carry some authority or high position of power to generate respect. Uh, and, and then earn your trust before they scam you. And that's basically what, what ESI has done. Um, you'll see a little bit of information about them, which I want to share with you so, so you get a good read on what this group is about. Um, the main cast of characters today is my pal, Mr. Terry Barnyard, um, kind of the head scammer that I need to really warn people about. And then he's got his, his co-scammer, uh, George, out of the ESI Ghana office. Um, <clears throat> you know, Terry basically is a broker, and um, he's adopted the ESI name. Um, he's not related to the ESI in Ghana. He's, he's basically a broker that uh, claims to be the owner of this business. He's the owner of ESI in Miami, which is great. I could be the owner of ESI in Daytona if I wanted, um, but it's not related, right? It's like, uh, you know, somebody once took and used Harbor Equity Partners Group, stole my letterhead and ran around trying to do deals based on my reputation. So here... You have uh, Terry runs around with a, uh, a Glock handgun, like he's on the set of Miami Vice. And, uh, you know, his little badge, and running around like a big shot, creating this illusion of authority. And he spends a lot of time selling you stories and posts, uh, and uh, online posts to legitimize his business. So, uh, to build this illusion of, uh, you know, authority and, and build your confidence and so that people can trust him, and ultimately, that's how he scams. I mean, basically, if you just go ahead and, and Google his name, you know, right out of the gate, right out of the gate, first, right out of the gate here, you have complaints right away. It's first one's ours. Um, Harbor Equity Partners gets some 30,000 hits a month, so we carry a lot of weight in, in the rank of Google. So we're going to be ranked ahead of his site because of our volume that we carry. You see here the next one is the ripoff report. And then the third one here is who scammed you. Fourth is who scammed you. The next one is another fraud scam. Fifth one is uh, Southern Court, Southern District Court. I mean, this guy... You know, he just, he's got more complaints against him than, than anybody I've ever seen. And again, he, he posts some things here, like this robbery, which may or may not be true or half true. We don't even know. But you'll see postings where, again, scammers try to build this illusion that they're legitimate. Like, here, here's the Dun & Bradstreet, right? I mean, all right, anybody can, can post this. And we're actually talking to them right now to flag them and flag this company because, again, it appears that they're legitimate and this is not any, in any way a legitimate company. And so just going down the list of page two, you see here again, scam book, right? You know, page three, it's again, more posts, more blogs from Harbor, people blogging in, scam book again, scam book again, who scammed you, who scammed you, shipment fraud, shipment fraud. I mean, this guy's rip off report, it's unbelievable. This is page four now. And this goes on to page 10, with 80 or 90 percent of each page complaints about him. So, 
you know, look, all I can say is what I can confirm. And I can confirm that most everything he says is a lie. And I can confirm that he spins stories to create, again, this illusion, which is how scammers like Terry and George and Max get to scam people. Now, you know, keep in mind, when you're doing these deals, you really got to know who your counterparty is. And, you know, you got to remember that it, there's this culture of what we call the 419ers, which is a, it's a biblical term under, under Matthew 419, which is a culture of people known as the fishers of men. And uh, for those of you not into the Bible, you know, I'm not terribly familiar with it, but, you know, these people are just a culture of people that prey upon other people. So you, you just got to watch out for these sorts. Uh, to review a transaction, you got to think, well, I'm a buyer of metal. Why would anybody need ESI? And the answer is you really don't, see. Um, ESI will charge a 5 or 7% uh, cost claiming that it's a government tax. But in fact, there is no export tax out of Ghana. Um, you'll know this if you go to a place like AA Minerals or the PMMC. The cost is a half a percent, not 5%. You know, you put a decimal in front of that, it's 0.5%. And if you use ESI and you're lucky to get product, basically all they're going to do is they take your 5% or 7% and they run to AA Minerals, pay AA Minerals to have AA Minerals, you know, ship it. And, you know, if you get product, you're lucky. So, you know, the problem with this is, is always this illusion. You know, Terry's making like he's the owner of this company. They're making like they're a legitimate business, but there's always this this sleight of hand, which is, you know, how con artists artists really uh, operate. You know, it's the same blue, blue, blueprint. Um, you know, no matter what the scam is, so uh, they always use this level of authority where they make you feel your money's safe and your product is safe or your process is safe. And that, you know, they're in control and they'll give you all these guarantees. And at the point where you feel the most comfortable is when you get scammed. So uh, an example of, of these types of deals is where, like, if you get one transaction through, um, you may be lucky. But that doesn't make that seller or that counterparty a reliable source because I've had sellers uh, actually try to scam me on the second deal or, or the third deal. So realistically, they try to build your confidence and then they change the process a little bit by implementing maybe, uh, you know, an upfront fee or whatever the case is. And if you have a problem with that, their rebuttal is, you know, basically they say, you can trust us. We've delivered. We proved to you. But that's where they trap you. So you really got to be careful you know, who you're dealing with and making sure you don't deviate into any sort of risky process. Now, uh, you might think, uh, well, you know, the first deal goes off and you can trust the guy. You just got to think again and make sure you stay with, with your process that uh, doesn't deviate from, um, from, from the transaction. Um, example, right? In, uh, in an investment banking transaction, you know you got a buyer, you got a seller, and usually you have an exchange. You know you know what you're getting in the transaction. It's it's pretty pretty straightforward. Even in an OTC transaction, which is what the gold market uh, really is, an over the counter transaction. But see, in that you have a process. The buyer and the seller uh, both need each other, and they both need comfort and you know, each side needs each other to carry out their part, and uh, together they they complete a transaction. Well, ESI is unique because it's in the middle, so they have the ability to rip off the seller and rip off the buyer, and we have complaints on both sides. So, um, you know, basically they're just there to collect the fee and and uh, and do their job, which is supposed to be transportation and 
they rarely get that done. And the problem is, is that Terry, Max, and George, you know, spin their tails and uh, complicate, confuse, and convolute all these transactions and spin this web of, of, of stories to, uh, you know, to, to spin you around in circles to create this, you know, again, illusion and compound that with all these excuses. So at the end of the day, you really don't even know what happened. And that's basically what this group does. Now, if you've done your due diligence and you've gone down to meet Terry and you follow the procedures and you, you know, you say, what do I need to do to get this deal done? And you look face to face and you get letters of authorization or you get the process nailed down and you think it's all good and then it all goes wrong. Well, that's because it was by design, you know. When you go to AA Minerals or PMMC, the deal doesn't have a simpler form. You know, I'm a buyer, I go to meet a seller, I'm standing in front of them, you know, I'm looking at the product, I get an inspection, if I like it, you know, it's good, if I don't like it, I walk. It's as simple as that. But, you know, here, um, the issue is that there's literally dozens of victims that you can see online, that you've seen uh, through Google. And um, all these people have been scammed. Um, some of them have contacted my office with reports on how they've scammed, been scammed. Um, and if you go to West Afri Africa, if you go to Accra and you hang out where a lot of the buyers and sellers you know, hang around in some of these hotels, and you talk to people, you kind of get the scope of this, is that there's probably more like hundreds of victims of this scam. And the issue is really that in Accra, this is a gray area. You know, there's really, this is really not a crime to take money from somebody. And so even if, even if you can get you know, George arrested or Max arrested, and they've all been arrested. I've got documents on that. They go to jail and they're out the next day or they're out that afternoon because there really is no law to to hold them. It's, it's not really a crime. So um, the idea really is to get the blogs out there and get these messages out there so that people don't get caught up, you know. Um, and uh, really, so to conclude... Um, and I know I've said this a lot on the blogs many times before, if you've had any experience or any bad experience um, with the ESI group or Terry Bonyard, uh, and you need information or you want to supply information, um, we are fully cooperating with the authorities uh, in the U.S. and in Accra. Um, we urge anyone who has uh, any position who needs information or who's been scammed to contact us. Um, you know, we'll get you our sources in the law enforcement. Um, and, you know, I know that um, we haven't implemented any of the actions against this group. We ourselves were victims, so uh, my company was contacted by both the ACRA investigators and the local uh, law enforcement here in the U.S., and hopefully, you know, I know everybody's on the trail of this George, Max, and Terry, and hopefully we can wrap this up and uh, take these people off the street before they do more harm to others. Um, and uh, again, if anybody's a victim, feel free to, you know, go to our website if you want. Um, you can see our blacklist and um, look at the news where we're posting updates on the scams that we're seeing out there. And if you if you need anything though, you can feel free to call or email here at Private Equity at Super. I'm sorry, Private Equity at um, Harbor Equity Partners. And uh, thanks again to everybody uh, who is a victim of the uh, ESI group and uh, in the ESI community. Um, and um, they're keeping in touch with us and helping to generate more information is, is has been a benefit. So um, just, I guess, stay tuned for more uh, broadcasts, and hopefully we can uh, report better news as we go forward in the year. Talk to you guys soon.